Hello everybody, welcome to this exciting episode of Bob the Same Man. Good news and bad news. Bad news, my last video of the year. Good news, it's December 31st. <laughs> so, I'll be looking forward to the next coming year and want to thank everybody who's been watching me for the past year or two. Um, today, uh, I'm going to do like a little best of type of deal. I'm going to put all little things together. People wanted to know about big signs, my plotter and stuff like that. So I thought I'd make a big sign, use the plotter and go into a little bit more detail. This video is a little bit more lengthy. Um, anyways, um, some new things coming up uh, next year. Will we go digital? Who knows? Don't think so, but uh, who knows what's going to happen in 2020. I had a good year, um, a few setbacks with my surgery and everything. Everything's going better now. Um, so I'm going to make a little video here on oversized signs. Some people think, oh my goodness, you know, my, my plotter's only 36 inches wide. How can I do anything bigger? You're only limited by the size of your, your roller and your imagination, you know. So I have a 48-inch roller, so I can make 48-inch signs. I have had to make bigger signs. I've cut them in half and spliced them with the panels together, and it, it turned out well. Uh, anyways, let's get into this video. It's exciting. You don't want to miss it. Um, probably a good video to watch for New Year's Eve. I, I hope to have this posted in the next hour or so, so everybody can watch this on New Year's Eve and, 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 and you know, s s go out in this year, end it big with the, the greatest video that I've produced here in a long time. Alrighty, let's get into it. Hello everybody, welcome to this exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man. Today we're gonna do a little bit of, uh, kind of like a little um, remake of a previous video. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make an oversized sign. So I've had a couple of people ask me, well, how do you make an oversized sign if your cutter only cuts so, so much material, so wide? So I have the GraphTech FC8600-100. It'll cut a piece of vinyl. Well, instead of buying a inches. huge machine that you'll probably spend thousands of dollars more for, and you're really never going to use it, but a few times, unless, you know, because here at the county we don't, do a whole lot of oversized signs. But when we do, I'm ready for it. So this is the GraphTech plotter that I have. It's total workhorse, this thing. We've had about six years now. I've probably put about maybe three blades in it. I don't change the blades very often. Every once in a while, I will do a little maintenance on the blades. Um, they're easily removed. And sometimes you just have to, I uh, got a little can of air and you just blow out the little tip and put it back in and you're ready to roll again. Um, like I said, six years, not a bit of problems with it. Um, delivers every time. Tech no problems with it. Excellent. And it's in the United States. Um, so anyways, let's get into um, showing you how we do a little bit of oversized signs. Stay with us, you don't want to miss this exciting. Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to make this uh, 48 inch sign. Okay, it's 48 inches square. So when it's up on its end like this, it's going to look like this, okay? And it's going to be a SW60CA, which is a California sign. Uh, in the California, it means TCD. Okay? We're special in California, we have our own everything. Um, so I have this book where I make all my signs. So you've probably seen this sign before. Watch for stop vehicles. Um, it's 48 inches. When it stands up on its end, it's a bohemian thing. It's about, I don't know, five, five and a half feet tall. I'm six foot, so darn near six foot sign. So obviously you're not gonna fit that through here with all the borders and the legend and everything. So what I'm gonna do is just start with the basic. I'm gonna cut the font out. And I'll start with 36 inch black material. Um, it's called the EC film. I'm just gonna be cutting out the font, the legend, whatever you wanna call it. This machine is really simple to set up. Um, if you have your pinch rollers, set your rollers, middle, set your material where it's supposed to go. Center of your head, set your rollers down, pinch rollers, turn the machine on. Okay, once I have my um, material in and my pinch roller down, it's real simple. I have a select, I want it to select either a roll, roll number two, or a sheet. A sheet would just be a 
it's going to measure the sheet and where it'll roll it's just going to measure one direction on it so when i hit my select here's what's going to happen okay now it's going to go measure my material and it's going to set it up it's just determined already now how wide my material is and it's ready to go so right now i'm going to take the 48 inch sign and since it's not going to cut out this border, usually you'll have to turn them sideways, like for the 36 inch sign. This would fit on the 36 inch material. But since I'm doing the 48, I'm just going to cut out this watch for stop vehicles. So all I'm going to do is hit this. It's already set up the way it should be. It's the spacing, the size font, and everything according to that sheet that I have from the California MUTCD. So it's this, and it's centered exactly where it's supposed to be. So the sign is on spec. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. I'm going to click file and I'm going to put output selected. Okay. And it gives you a little tips at startup. So now here's, here's my um, cutout, what I'm going to do. And it tells me the size of material. It's going to be um, 50 inches long and 31 inches high, which is perfect for my material because my material is um, 36 inches. So that's no problem. I'm just going to set a few um, horizontal cut lines in there. It makes it easier for weeding out. And it's simple. All I'm going to do now is you can see the little cursor right up there where it says cut. So when I hit cut, I'll show you what happens. Okay, now what my plotter's going to do, it's going to cut out the um, fonts that I have on watch for stop vehicles. Right now it's cutting through, um, see if I have a little piece of scrap in here. It's cutting through the top layer of the EC film. I did a little test cut here earlier. So there's two layers of this. You have the top layer, which is your actual EC film that it's cutting. And then there's this uh, clear layer below, which the knife is set to cut only the black, and it's not going to cut through all the way to the plastic below. It's kind of a neat little deal how it does that. So now it's going to cut this out. When it's all done, then we're going to weed it, and we're going to uh, machine it with some transfer tape. And I'll show you that process in a little bit. We'll let this finish up, and we'll be right back with you. Okay, it's finished cutting out. So what I want to do is I want to cut this piece of vinyl and you, you don't need a pair of scissors or anything. The machine cuts it for you. I'm going to feed out a little bit so it gives me a little bit of extra border room to work with. And then you just, simple as pressing cross cut and then cut. So it's going to come through, it's going to measure its vinyl and see how wide it is so it knows where to cut. There you go. And then it's going to set itself up ready for the next job. It's going to go back and uh, measure everything again. Okay, now what we're doing is we refer to it as weeding. We're going to peel out the uh, all the excess materials that we don't need. Um, so I'll kind of take you through the weeding process a little bit here. See how it it just I put those cut lines in. It makes it so much easier. I have a piece of extra plastic that I use, and I have the pieces. I stuff is really sticky. As you can see, it, what it's done is it's peeled out or it's cut out the top layer of the EC while it's left the plastic layer below. And all I basically have to do then is just weed out the, uh, the spots that need to come out to expose my... All right, there we have it. Watch for stop vehicles. Now what I'll do is I'm going to put some transfer tape over the top of this. And this is my weeding tool that I use, by the way. I love this thing. It's a, like a pin, and it's got a really sharp tip on it that I use to pull it out. I've tried everything, tweezers, X-Acto knives. X-Acto knife meeting fingers does not go well. Neither does this little point. It's pretty sharp. Anyways, let's throw a little transfer tape over the top of this. So I have 18 inch transfer tape, should cover most of what I'm looking for here.
I, there's various ways you can apply this transfer tape. It's it's a learning curve. It takes a lot to get used to it. It looks easy. I might make it look easy, but everybody who does it, I'm sure everybody remembers you, you struggle with it. You get wrinkles and bubbles and all, all that good stuff. Turn it around the other side. What I try to do, I, I made this little dispenser, and you can see I got different sizes on there. I pull it out, it's like a big roll of scotch tape or masking tape. I set it down in the middle. Okay, and I, I light, lightly go from one end to the other. And work out the bubbles. And I just take a hand and gently you know, place it down. Like I said, it's a little, little trick. A little art to it, I guess you want to call it, of applying the transfer tape. Once you get it, trim it all up. Then what I do, it's real simple, I just flip it back over. You have all those sticky edges out with the tape and the overlaps the show there. And you just go along and cut all the way around it, get a nice clean edges on these things so there's no tape that's going to stick on it or anything. Alright, so there we have it. We're going to transfer this on, watch the stop vehicles. What this transfer tape does, it's going to peel off the letters See how the letters will stay now on the transfer tape? And this clear plastic gets removed. All right, next phase of the oversized sign coming up. Okay, now my next deal, I don't know if you want to call it a problem, palindrome, what you want to call it. So my sign is 48 inches long, 48 inches high. It stands up on the diamond shape. It's going to be, you know, five foot, 10 inches, five foot, nine inches, something like that. So I want to sheet it. Okay, it's 48 inches as long as my table. My material is only 36 at the widest. So if I use two pieces of 36, I'm going to have some left over. I happen to have different sizes. So what I'm going to do down here, I have, like I have here, I have rolls set up under here. material which whenever it's 24 it's always just a little bit bigger it's usually like a oh, an eighth about three sixteenths oversized so what I want to do is I want to cut two four foot sections right. always start with a nice sharp blade I like these Stanley fat maxes you can store if you're out in the field or whatever you can store extra blades in them and I always keep them sharp Make sure you retract your blade whenever you use it. I use those carpenter jeans. I love those jeans. It's got a little pocket where I can put the uh, um, blade in. So now I'm going to cut another piece here. Two 24 inch pieces, which will give me my 48 inch. And I'm going to go ahead, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to butt those pieces together. So this is how I butt these. I've shown in some other videos how I do this, but we're just going to kind of do a, this will be like a best of video, I guess you call it. So what I want to do is I want to take those factory seams and butt them together. And what I do is I put a piece of scotch tape on them to hold them in place while I, so I'm going to get, I, I use this strapping tape I get it from yeah, what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of seam in the back and kind of hold it together. So that I can clip this over. Now I've got the seam right down here. It's really once these are butted up so tight on the sign, you really don't see them ever. That's cut off there. We'll just use the guy. Okay, so there we go. 
all butted together. So now I've got a 48 by 48 inch piece of uh, All right, I hope everybody can see that. Here's my blank, 48 inches square. Well, wrap corners. And here's my 48 inch piece of material that I had cut out. And what we're gonna do, is we're gonna go ahead and sheet this on the um, sign blank. Okay, I got my 48 inch blank in here. I've got the material um, pretty well centered on the, on the sign blank. I'm gonna check all the corners to make sure that it's gonna get total coverage. Good there, I'm gonna go here. So we're good everywhere. So I'll go ahead and pinch my roller down. I, I keep about uh, a little over 80, about 90 pounds of pressure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this back. And there's a um, clear plastic on the back to expose the adhesive side. There's my joint there where I had the tape on there. Sometimes it's nice to have somebody to help you with this, but if you don't have anybody to help you at the time, it, it just takes a little bit longer you know, to work around. Yeah, I forgot what they call these things, a snappy tube. Kind of neat little thing, little laser cutter in there. Come on, cut your vinyl. Okay, now that I got my vinyl there, I like to do sometimes is just Out. You can see where I had uh, used that strapping tape to kind of uh, seam that together. And that's why I put strapping tape on both sides because it'll hold this in place while you roll it. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and trim this up and we'll be ready for the. Uh, Okay, now that I have my sign all trimmed up, what I want to do, uh, remember that piece of tape we put down the middle to hold it together while we sheeted it? Don't forget to remove it. Um, don't remove it, you're going to be in trouble because it's going to, you're going to put your font and legends over the top of it and it's just not going to turn out. So what I'll use it, Joe. I spray my sign down with a little denatured alcohol. It'll remove any of the dirts, the oils in it and stuff. And uh, yeah, some places have really strict standards. I know that you can't wear, you have to wear gloves when you work on the signs. But you're worried about the oils in your skin and all that stuff. Well, that too much here. Okay, now that I have it clean, we're gonna apply the borders to it. What I do is I, I pre-cut these borders because like I said, this is a 48 inch sign and these borders are 36 inches long with the materials. So we'll have to place them in and then I have the corner radiuses already cut out. So what this sign calls for, through my specs here, it's a 36 and a 48, we're doing the 48 so it calls for a three quarter inch inset for the borders, which means from th the edge to the outside of the border is three quarters of an inch. And the actual border is an inch and a quarter all the way around. So what I like to do, I have these, a bunch of these preset. This is the three quarter one. So what I'll do is I'll just go around the edge of the sign and I'll put some marks three quarters of an inch. I know some people look at this video and they go, wow, this is Stone Age. We do digital printing and stuff like that. Well, we don't do digital printing here. We do, I like to refer to it as old school. Cut EC. Takes a little bit longer. But you know, we're not in 
we have you know 6,500 signs that we take care of over that, but it's not that big of a deal here. Eventually, we'll probably go to digital, but not right now. So what I do then is I peel these off. Since I have my pre-marks on there, I kind of center the border so I have enough on each side. So I just lay it down. On the marks, and there we have a three-quarter, and our border's an inch and a what is our border here? Inch and a quarter thick. And we have inch and a quarter thick. Perfect. Well, like I say, my motto is perfect. It's just going to have to be good enough for today. So we'll go ahead and we'll apply all these. And now all I have to do is do my corner radiuses. So there's how I do the borders. I'm not gonna bore you with doing all four of these and showing you how I do that. So I'm gonna do all these and we'll be back next. Okay, I have all my borders and my corner radius is on. And what I'm gonna do, then we're just gonna go ahead and roll this sign, make sure we get good coverage on it. All right, so there's my 48 inch sign already got the border on so as you can see with a 36 inch roll of EC vinyl which would be this big there's no way you could probably cut it and try to piece it together I have done that it's really hard to do that um, you're wasting a whole lot of material if you try to do that just with a border and then when you try to do the, the legend to get the um, fonts in there it, it's really tough to do this I find is the easiest way and it turns out the best so we're going to go ahead and get set up and we're going to do the, um, place the, uh, the font in here. Okay, what I have here are some reference lines. I've taken the, the holes that I have already punched in the sign. These are going to be 32 inches apart because there's going to be a wind brace that goes on the back. Wind brace, back brace, whatever you want to call it. And then these are the mounting holes that go top, bottom, and then in the middle. So I just made a cross section. You take the center of the four stopped, goes right in the center, so what I've done is I made some marks. These are uh, seven inch tall letters. So three and a half inches, three and a half inches. And then the center of watch is the T. So I want to make sure that the T lines up this way and that the four stop comes across. So it's really just a matter of simple lining it up. But here, sometimes simple isn't always the way to go. We like perfection here. So what I do is I'll take a ruler and a square. I'm going to cut this off so I get good measurement here. And I'll use my square and I'm going to line up this lettering on the top here to make sure that we're square. Now what we'll do is I am going to cut some of these edges off here so that they don't get caught when I... Okay, so here's what we're going to do is we're just going to take our transfer tape and we're going to peel off that back layer of that plastic. Okay. See how the uh, letters stuck to the top of the transfer tape? And there's that sticky backing on the back of the letters. And now it's going to go apply to the sign now. Now we're just going to roll it out. And we're going to do the same to the other side. Okay, there's the sign already rolled to go. And all we have to do now is just peel off the transfer tape. Kind of reminds me of Christmas unwrapping this present and going, oh, look at what I got. Okay. 
there's our sign, basically. And all I'm gonna do to clean it up a little bit is take some of my denatured alcohol and that'll just wipe off those reference lines like no oh, goodies business. So there we go, 48 inches by 48. And like I said, when it's once it's stood up on its end, it is going to be Four feet, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five feet, ten inches tall. So don't ever let uh, the restriction of your machine limit you to what you can do because you're only limited by what you can, your imagination is going to do. So when I first had to do the 48 inch size, I thought, well, how am I going to do that? So what I did is I, I, uh, I cut out the 36 inch. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll go two feet at a time. So then I had two feet and I had to, you know, I had to um, space it in there, you know, match it up and line it up. It didn't work well. So anyways, I found out this is the best. It's the easiest. Everything's straight. I don't have to worry about trying to match stuff up and it doesn't look like it's overlapped where I, I did match stuff up because I was always worried where you match stuff up. Is it gonna split over time? Is it gonna peel or whatever? But anyways, like I said, uh, don't let the size bother you or intimidate you um, when you're making your signs. And don't, it, don't let anybody tell you size doesn't matter. It's all about the mechanics. Little tip from the sign man on oversized signs. As always, thanks for watching.